Good afternoon, I'm Jodie Gill and this is your Midday News Fix for Thursday the 8th of August. Oranga Tamariki will now have to report quarterly on youth offending rates and how frequently it visits children in care. It's part of several new performance measures being required for reporting by the Children's Minister. Senior political reporter Sophie Trigger has more. Karen Shaw says she's told the agency to provide greater transparency about its performance, calling current statistics of child deaths in care a national disgrace. The agency will provide the percentage of children in care visited in the past eight weeks and the portion of reports of concern that are addressed within 48 hours. It also asks for the amount of complaints handled in a way that meets OT's standards. The government says it's delivering a credible plan for communities to fund and finance much-needed investment in water infrastructure. The local government minister has unveiled changes to allow new council-owned water companies to be able to access cheaper borrowing. Organisations will be able to leverage up to 500% of their operating revenues through the local government funding agency. Minister Simeon Brown says this will be an enduring component of water service delivery. This is about providing local government with a certainty to it needs to deliver water services while minimising costs on ratepayers. Horofenua Council looks to have pinpointed a probable source of lead contamination. Tokumaru residents just south of Palmerston North have been urged to only use bottled water after tests found elevated levels of lead in the town's drinking water supply. Community Infrastructure Group Manager Daniel Hay says the tap at the water treatment plant solely used for testing is still at non-compliant levels. He says safe levels have now been found throughout the other pipes. We will work through a process in the coming days to do further testing to ensure that um, we can demonstrate compliance over consecutive days. New research shows children are likely missing out on proper nutrition as costs rise. An Auckland University researcher and GP has found a family with two children living on the benefit would be going backwards to the tune of more than $200 if it bought low-cost healthy food. Dr Joanna Strom says it's clearly hard for these families to feed children healthily. Low-cost healthy foods have been increasing and increasing more than the food price index overall. The government's being urged to step in to save New Zealand paper and pulp mills. Winstone's pulp and timber mills near Oakune are looking to close due to high power costs, with 300 jobs on the line. Following this, an Auckland paper recycling pulp mill has put forward a proposal to close. First Union spokesperson Justin Wallace says government can't allow this work to be outsourced. We'll be sending product overseas and then brought back in at a cheaper rate. But what will happen is... In the case of this plant, 75 families will have a bread earner who won't have a job. In sport, All Blacks coach Scott Robertson has made a major change in midfield for the first test against Argentina in Wellington. Anton Leonard-Brown gets the nod at 13 outside Geordie Barrett with Rico Ioane on the bench. In the most difficult selection calls, Bowden Barrett beats Will Jordan to play fullback. Sam Darry earns a first test start at lock. Ethan Blackadder grabs the number six jersey and TJ Perinara starts at halfback. Olympic bronze and silver medalist Lydia Ko will head into the second round of the golf in Paris, tied for 12th, seven strokes off the lead. I'm Jodie Gill and that's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at 5pm from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.